the, the main character of this movie looks like the guy your mom fucks right after the divorce. Right, <laughs> yes. Like, hey, this is Steven, all right? And he's gonna, you're gonna be seeing an awful lot of him, so tell your father, if you see him, that I am dating, and I am fantastic. I am down three and a half pounds, almost four. Full movie. 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 Welcome to episode one of the Gamcast, where each week we suffer through another excruciating example of Christian cinema in an effort to prove that if God existed, his PR couldn't possibly suck this bad. I'm your host, No Illusions. Sitting to my left is none other than Heath Enright. Heath, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. And sitting 988 miles to my right is Eli Bosnick. Eli, welcome to the exciting, jet-setting lifestyle of a podcaster, sir. I can see you out my window. <laughs> Well done, Palin. <laughs> now, I, I know it's bad form to do this at the start of the uh, of the show, and in future episodes, we're going to save it for the close. But before we even get started, I wanted to thank all the people who made this show possible. I, I don't think any of us expected such a quick response when we announced this podcast, and I think I speak for everybody involved when I say that I am truly humbled by the show of support. Yeah, it was it was terrifyingly quick because it was sort of. It, <laughs> was, I don't know if you've ever been on a date with someone. And you like go and you're like, hey, I'm really glad you decided to do this. And they're like, oh, I'm gonna suck your dick. And you're like, whoa! <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm so happy. I'm so I was gonna go to a movie, but we don't have to do that. <laughs> Movies are dumb. I hear Tom Cruise goes rogue, but who cares? Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? Goes protocol. And, you know, I want to commit that we are all going to be working tirelessly to make the investment worth your while. And the way we're going to do that, of course, it's not by slobbering over our admittedly slobber-worthy Patreon supporters. It's going to be by reviewing the horrible piece of shit that Eli dug up for us this week. So, first of all, before we even talk about this movie, I have to know, Eli, where the fuck did you even find this? Dude, dude? awesome. So th this comes from the Cracked List, which I, I forget which you l listener sent this to us, uh, you know, months and months ago. But it came from the Cracked List, and I, I watched the clip at the time that's on the Cracked, you know, terrible Christian movies you won't believe existed oh, right um, article. And I watched the clip, and I was like, oh, we got to save this. we got to save this for something <laughs> special. This is Daddy's birthday present to Daddy. <laughs> And oh indeed God. it was worse oh, yes. than anything I possibly could have imagined. I've, here's I, At the very top of my notes on every page, I have written, don't watch this movie. Don't think about this movie. Don't say the name of this movie into a mirror at midnight <laughs> lest it appear behind you and you have to watch it. That's how oh. fucking terrifying this movie is. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so the name of the film is Miracle Man. It's a direct-to-YouTube release, and it's only a movie in the sense that the pictures move. Now, Heath, Eli, if you had to give the listeners an idea how bad this movie is in one sentence, what would it be? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> you, you know how you're supposed to feel bad about being mean to mentally disabled people well this movie <laughs> this movie is the exception to that rule this movie is like it's like it's like a gang of bullies at a school for kids with down syndrome and those bullies are making fun of the kid that also has like severe autism too in addition to the down syndrome <laughs> So, you know you, you still have a little bit of sympathy but way less than you normally would have well said this this movie is like a moron from the second grade, gave a book report on the Bible, but he had actually watched an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of Walker, Texas Ranger influence in this movie. That was yeah. definitely one of the main uh, contributing factors in the director's mind. Okay, so I'm rather than uh, going an analogy, I'm going to go with a technical uh, fact about this movie. Okay, this movie is so low budget that when there's a conversation scene and we cut from one character to another, the amount of ambient hiss in the background changes. Yeah. This movie is literally less, has a lower budget than this podcast. Oh, by far. 
But we did a sound check. If, if anyone did a sound check, if anyone did a sound check throughout the entire process of this movie, I will cut off and eat my own dick. Right to this guy who rate the movie, still makes movies, he's got a website and everything. Yes, if he uh, did a single sound check, I will on YouTube for our Patreon visitors first, and then everyone else will get the short edited version, cut off, and then devour my own penis. Because it didn't fucking happen. There's no, no possible way it took place. No, no lighting checks, no sound At checks. All. And before we get into the movie itself, can we talk a little bit about the dude that played Jesus or JC? I, cause, I, because I can't tell if he was hot. Occasionally I thought <laughs> I thought he was hot, and then occasionally his eyes were open so wide you thought somebody just left him on the clockwork orange <laughs> machine for too long. Yeah, was, he, was he hot? <laughs> He looked like Bill Hader during an orgasm. Yeah, he <laughs> reacts to this movie ridiculous. the exact same way that I react to this movie, which is with boredom and discomfort. But he's yes. on camera. If you told me that he was at gunpoint throughout the entire filming of this movie, I'd be like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I get it. I get it. He looks like someone who has a gun pointed at him or a loved one the entire time of this film. <laughs> and he's that weird. He's not necessarily unattractive. He's sort of, I forget what I wrote down here. I had a note about what he looks like. <laughs> looks like the skinny guy from Ice Hockey on original Nintendo. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he looks and talks like a surf coach. <laughs> like like your, your first day of surf coach. It's like, hey, guys, my name's Chap. I know, Chap. <laughs> and we're all going to have a really good time this summer, guys. Now, three rules of safety. you got to remember, I'm Christ our Lord. I can power up like Goku. Kamehameha brings you back to life. Oh, shit. We're all going to have a really great time. Oh, my God. Just okay. always wet like he jogged there. He jogs his set every morning. Well said. All right, so we're going to take a quick break and a deep breath, because when we come back, we're going to be going elbow deep into this pile of dinosaur shit, and we're not stopping until we reach the bottom. Hi, I'm Brick Brazen, acting coach to stars such as Kirk Cameron, Daniel Klatman, and Michelle Fanislakatek. If you're acting in Christian cinema, the demands made on you will be far above anything made on any other actor. Using my patented 21 drive yourself crazy with batshit beliefs technique, you'll be able to turn your performances from this Hi, my name's Anna to this Hi, my name is Anna Fantastic. For just six easy payments of ninety nine ninety nine, you can star in the next Christian blockbuster like Fireproof, Left Behind, International Guerrilla J, or just a crazy movie you made on your iPhone. And we can take your performances from this. Would you like fries with that? To this. Would you like fries with that? So I, I was trying to come up with a, like an inaugural episode worthy opening for this review. And this is what I have. Y you guys tell me what you think. In the beginning, the movie was without form and void, <laughs> and darkness was upon the face of the embedded YouTube player. And then God said, let there be lens flare. And there was <laughs> lens flare. And God saw the lens flare, and he said, fuck, am I going to need a lot of Excedrin to make it through this goddamn movie? Yeah, no, that is uh, that is perfect. That is the perfect way to just... The first two seconds... Again, you don't have to watch this movie. It's free on YouTube, and you should watch it, because why should I suffer alone? But <laughs> if you do watch this movie, in the first second and a half of this movie, you go, oh, fuck this movie. Right. Fuck this movie. <laughs> you don't need anything. This movie could have caught at the second second and then been The Godfather 2, and I would have been like, no, man. Remember that beginning <laughs> second and a half? Not worth it. No, Rubel Robert didn't. No, I don't care. I don't no. fucking care. It's not worth it. Now, this is, okay, this is literally true. I, I went back, I counted it, I timed it. By the 11 second mark in this movie, they have used six different effects. Yeah. Six different effects in 11 seconds. Not artistically like you're picturing it either. And not in a good way. No, no. I don't know that there's a good way that you could do this, but this is definitely, if there's a spectrum of good to bad ways that you can use six effects in 11 seconds, <laughs> this is on the bad end of the spectrum. Yeah, this is like someone on meth watched the opening credits to Justified and they were like, I've got it! Let's make a movie about Jesus! <laughs> 
That's what the opening is. I'm Jesse Crawford, and I've gone into the desert to get away from it all. And then he d- and wanders around the desert, and then we immediately cut to the first green screen. Now, it's important to mention that 90% of this fucking movie is shot on green screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scenes that you couldn't imagine being shot on a green screen are shot on a green screen. A bar. A church. They didn't have a church. No. This is a Christian movie. Needed to green screen a church. A living room. A house. An alley. They had access, if, if they had access to no buildings. If this, if this movie was shot in the vacuum of space, they would have had more fucking sets than they shot on in this movie. And not good green screen. Again, that's why no. everything was like four feet in front of the green screen. It's like right. they, like they stole someone's green screen. Like there was one leaning against the back of a truck and they were like, great, great, let's use it, let's use it before he wakes up. That's the kind of green screen. <laughs> no, I mean, like, the green screen is literally, like, the lighting is in front of the actors for the green screen, so you can see their shadows. Yeah, you can see the their shadows screen. and their outlines, like someone's doing a terrifying... Also, everyone kind of looks like a flesh puppet. Like, if someone's face half <laughs> fell away and there was a robot underneath, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I get it. That makes sense. So everyone looks presidents. like they're just a horrible dead body puppet show due to the green screen <laughs> and the fact that you can see their outlines cut into the vacuum of space. It's fucking horrible. Oh my god. Okay, so now I should give you at least a, 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 a some bearing on this movie. Basically, what we've what we're doing in in a sense is retelling the Jesus story in the modern day, or at least that's the inspiration that led to that. And that's not necessarily a terrible idea, but in the hands of everyone involved in this movie, it certainly was. Yeah, I mean, they could not have got, listen, I don't put, I don't know much about the good parts of the Jesus story. The whole human sacrifice thing at the end puts a damper on it for me. But (laughs) I guarantee you the big parts of Jesus' journey were not competition for his carpentry business and that you should drink plenty of water. Because if this movie has two messages, it's not to drink your calories. Hydrate. (laughs) And that Jesus had a terrible time in the business world with his bills. His bills and the recession get far more mention in this movie than God. Yeah, right. No, the recession probably comes up, I think, something like 48 times. Yeah, exactly. So we open up after his desert walking scene at a bar. uh, And just to give you... Just to give you an example, the movie gives you a strong lead-in for how terrible it's going to be. There's a girl on green screen who comes over, and he's at a barbecue restaurant. And she talks, again, everyone in this movie, like many Christian movies, talks as though they're doing an Al-Qaeda video that's being sent out. (laughs) Like, if someone came in and sawed their heads off halfway through, I'd be like, oh, I get it. It's by the same guys. (laughs) Akbu Shalar did this one. I know Akbu's work. This is good. I get it. Everyone talks like, and it, so she's like, Jesse, I can't believe you were in the desert. When you're ready for a home cooked meal, let me know, cause I'm a waitress. <laughs> and he's like, and again, he never responds. He responds to, I would say, one one hundredth of the things that people say to him in this movie. He just stares into open space and she's like, okay, exit right. Uh, oh no, don't say that. <laughs> exit right. And the man next to him goes, you've been acting squirrely since you got back from the desert. Did you get bit by a squirrel? And at this point I wrote in my notes, oh sweet Jesus, kill me. Because <laughs> that's what this movie has in total. That's line. the kind of dialogue. The actual line, you've been acting kind of squirrely. Did you get bit by a squirrel? And as though that's not bad enough, they have to shit on that line by having Jesus go, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the guy's like, oh, it's just, it's just a joke. I was just, but I didn't get bit by a squirrel. No, I know. I just, I didn't. <laughs> so then he's staring there into space. And then all of a sudden we hear screaming outside. However, this movie is shot so out of sequence that it's obviously a mugger scene. This is where the muggers who look the least like muggers in the universe. Oh, it, I, I wrote down she's being attacked by Bugs Bunny villains. Right, exactly. Bugs Bunny, gay Bugs Bunny video yes. villains. Yes, acapella group with leather jackets. Yeah, right. exactly. One of, one of the great advantages to Christian cinema is because so much of the community is homophobic, they don't know how gay certain things look. So whenever they come up with tough characters, they put yes. them in assless chaps and leather jackets, and they're like, oh, look at this guy. He doesn't even cover his butt when he rides on his motorcycle. This must be for really tough ones. So they're all, they're both dressed like British chappies, 
from a, yes. from like a fucking 1970s roller rink film. <laughs> and, and the, and the interaction goes like this. Her line is first where she goes, no, stop, leave me alone. No, stop, leave me alone. And then he goes, Hey, lady, which means that she turned around and was just like, ah! <laughs> just immediately assumed she was, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's lucky that they were muggers because they had been like, hey, is this the barbecue place? And she'd just been like, no, leave me alone! Leave me alone, God, leave me alone! I let go of my arm, you're hurting me! I'm, I'm just standing here, wanting to know if that's the gas station or if that's the, okay, I'm gonna go. So, Jesus comes around the back and they're like, hey, what's this, is your girlfriend? And we're like, all right, Jesus is gonna fucking kick people in the face like Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah, cause, sure. As you do. <laughs> But instead, he tells no. them to talk to the hand, yes. and they freeze like a time-stop Japanese porno. <laughs> so just keep in mind, this movie opens. The first demonstration of Jesus' powers is stopping time, freezing people. <laughs> and that's how Selectively. that's how biblically aware this movie is. But they were like, well, what's the first thing we should demonstrate? Well, do you remember when Jesus fought those muggers and he froze time? <laughs> he pulled their pants down around their ankles, and when they woke up, they were like, whoa! We should probably show that. We should show that. People will like that part. Yeah, oh, God. And for it, it, we didn't know it at the time, but that was really, the movie peaked right there. Yeah. That it is, was all that, downhill from here. Insane. And then we cut to Satan. Now, Satan is oh, by far my favorite character in this movie. Oh, yes. Satan is like a middle management. <laughs> he is definitely not the boss of anything. He's definitely like an angry middle manager who looks like Zordon from the Power Rangers. <laughs> Just, if the Power Rangers jumped in and were like, hey, there's a giant monster, would be like, oh, guys, I don't have time right now. I'm dealing with something else. Uh, Tommy, just, you know, to form a giant robot. You know, the usual plan. Just form a giant robot and kill him. I'm doing, I've got other work. I want to I want to make a generational translation, by the way, for people who don't know who Zordon is. Um, <laughs> for people my age and above, it looked like the main bad guy from Tron superimposed in a clutch cargo cartoon fashion. And if you yeah. get that, uh, if you get that reference, by the way, congratulations on the discount at Denny's. It's nice. And, and Zordon is I, or Satan is talking to his minions and the first thing that Jesus, that Satan says to his minion is, what do you think we should do? So basically, Satan's using 10-minute manager techniques. <laughs> He's like, all right, come on, I want, I want this to be a constructive environment. Let's all, let's all just jump in here. No wrong ideas. If you shoot an idea down, you put a dollar in the idea jar. I want everyone to feel comfortable in this workplace. How do we bring down Jesus? And the first... And the first recommendation is we have to attack his manhood. And I wanted so badly that there would just be a flash cut to a demon running up and kicking <laughs> Jesse Crawford in the nuts. Just like, ah Gotcha! Good luck that's, walking with that one! Because it would be more vicious than anything they do to him oh, yes. in this fucking movie. So... Then we get to Jesus in his home office in one of the only real scenes we had in the entire movie. So these people did have access to a home office. I, I mm -hmm. guarantee it's the office of wherever this movie was shot. Right. Uh, but not an alley. Just to give you a, 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 a context. They could not find a, a place where two buildings meet <laughs> in the dark. But they did have an office with a fax machine. And it was obviously w not big enough for the camera because the, the scene is so goddamn cramped and tight and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No, abs everyone had to like, okay, here, you get out of here. Yeah, no, I'll go over. And now, it's, okay, don't bump into Larry. Oh, the boom. <laughs> so he's sitting there and he we have a monologue where he's like, bills, bills, bills. It, again, this movie talks about Jesus' financial situation far more than it talks about anything else. Mm -hmm. For for Christ, who is constantly talking in this movie about not caring about money, he constantly talks about money. He's always <laughs> like, you must know that our mission is here is not to build houses, is not to make money, to do something larger. But fuck, really, $25 a month for Con Ed? This is garbage. <laughs> What is this? Guys, we gotta stop leaving the lights on. When you leave a room, you gotta turn it off. I'm the Lord and Savior. I'm the Son of God. I'm not made out of money. So then we cut to, um, the dinner date. Now, this, this comes up a lot. I'm gonna get to this in a second. They, but the temptations of Satan in this movie 
are so fucking lame oh, no, that they can all. only have been created by Christians. Because so basically, they're at this dinner date, and she turns to him as you do during casual, uh, you know, during casual uh, dinner conversation, yeah. and says, "So, are you a prophet?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> And let me tell you, I've tried that as a conversation started on dates on a pretty regular basis, and it does not go over well. And then, so he leaves from their dinner date, and again, they're just sitting having dinner, and Satan, or a demon, I don't know, he looks like Chevy Chase. I'm going to call him Chevy Chase. Okay. Chevy Chase demon appears behind him, and he goes, I know you enjoyed the evening and want to see her again. So Satan's temptation in this movie is a second dinner date. Right. <laughs> That's right. the temptation he has for Christ, is the chance to have conversation over mediocre pasta again. <laughs> Let me tell you, I am, would be so much of a better Satan minion than any of these... Sa I'd be like, this is a picture of Tori Black. I'm going to give her seven vaginas and tentacles that make you orgasm. I, but, but Satan's instead is like, how would you like some more garlic knots? Right, right. Like, I, I seriously expected at some point for him to break out and offer like 15% off of his car insurance or, or to get him on the first page of Google or something. Right, exactly. I, I noticed that your business is online. Would you like a landing page which will then direct to your business? Right. You're guaranteed on the first page of Google. Top SEO. Join me. <laughs> I have a group on for Denny. <laughs> Take my hat. <laughs> and to further prove how fucking crazy this is, he goes, I want to show you something. Oh. To which he shows him the world's most boring business meeting. <laughs> okay, I actually want to, because you cannot possibly understand how bad this is without hearing it. So I want to play you, and I promise it'll be brief, a clip from this scene to set it up. This is how boring the conversation and how poorly delivered it, 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 the conversation in this movie is. And notice, by the way, the change in hiss. That's when we cut from one person to another. There's a rather small but solid company in Mesa that I think we should consider. And who may they be? JC Construction. They've been around for a while and have a good track record. I suggest dropping Holty now and bringing them on. We do have a policy of only doing business with those companies in good standing with the Better Business Bureau and that have an established good reputation in our community. Yes, this, that is, that, what you just heard, is the highest level of acting you can expect from this fucking movie. <laughs> Again, I don't, if you gave this, if you woke someone up in the middle of the night, you were like, hey, hey, you read these fucking lines, read these fucking lines, and they had never <laughs> read English before, they would have done a better job than this woman just like, we only have a, I was asleep, good <laughs> reputation, people, better business bureau, what? Where am I? Why am I dressed like a businesswoman? <laughs> Fucking crazy. At which point he goes, well, there is one guy whose name is Jesse Crawford. And then his head appears in the clouds behind them. Right. And I wanted so badly for them to just be like, he's the one in the clouds behind you. If you wanted to <laughs> see his name's uh, Jesse Custer. And he's, we uh, think he's hot, but we're not sure. Right, exactly. He's like a strong seven. Like you'd do it if you... Like, if you had a really good CrossFit class and you're feeling all psyched up, you, know, you, just, want, you just want something to go in there. He's like a... He's like a, a really nice yoga instructor that you throw a bone to right after the breakup. <laughs> he looks like, this is what he looks like. The, the main character of this movie looks like the guy your mom fucks right after the divorce. Right, <laughs> yes. Like, hey, this is Steven, alright? And he's gonna, you're gonna be seeing an awful lot of him, so tell your father, if you see him, that I am dating, and I am fantastic, I am down three and a half pounds, almost four, because I'm doing the paleo diet, and this is my boyfriend, <laughs> Steven. Hey, can I call you son? No, you can't. You are younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> so the point of this insane, stupid fucking scene is that the devil's temptation is to get him a really good contract for his construction company to help him out with the bills during the recession. Right, and when Jason, and when, uh, no, and when Satan is trying to, is trying to tempt him, he, at the ending of that, before he disappears, he goes, you know you need the work. 
especially in this recession. Yes. <laughs> so that's the level you're talking is where so it's, and where Satan's like, come on, housing is down four point six percent. The bubble has popped, and predatory loans are a huge problem for everyone in every industry. What are you going to do? Use TurboTax. <laughs> <laughs> like the guy with the question marks who teaches you how to get money from the government's gonna pop up and be like, I'm here too. I'll show you how to get money back. <laughs> and then that that's followed up by one of the most bizarre scenes in in the in the whole thing. I don't even want to call it a movie. Basically, he just gets a phone call from his brother, and his brother asks if he can meet him in the next scene. Right, meet him at the airport. He has a yeah, layover. He's like, I got a two-over layover. layover. Yeah. Why don't you come meet me in the airport? Again, all of the scenes in this movie are so fucking crazy. Like, why not just be like, hey, let's meet for lunch. He's like, I have a two-hour layover. You must meet me at the airport. At that airport, there will be a lounge. In that lounge, there's a stuffed teddy bear. The stuffed teddy bear has a single eye. That eye sees the future. <laughs> And none of it ever comes back. None of it. We never, no. that brother never comes back. The conversation never the, comes the back. The blonde chick from the beginning never comes back. Never. Waitress, gone. Yeah. Fucker. He, Satan <laughs> offers a second dinner date and he's like, no, I don't want it. And she fucking poops away. That she plot disappears. line is over. I assume that wait, that, that woman saw the dailies of this movie and her face melted like she opened the Ark of the Covenant for <laughs> how fucking terrible it was. And they were like, oh man, another actress died, guys. <laughs> She just watched it and she shot herself in the mouth with a t-shirt gun. She was like, oh, no, thanks. <laughs> we'll have to replace her with somebody who's all eyelash. Right, exactly. Or someone who doesn't speak any fucking English. <laughs> right. Or both. Or both. Let's do both. Right. Yeah. Exactly. We're getting ahead so, of ourselves. Now we're at the airport with uh, JC's brother. Right. Who we, who we never see again. And then, and his brother, just again, for the insane moments that never matter or take or have any significance, he goes, hey, bro. I got you your favorite, four and one, at which Jesus is suspicious, like it's Game of Thrones and he might be poisoned. <laughs> it's, Jesus rejects four mixed sodas in a cup. No. And then he's like, come on, man, it's just iced tea. And he sips, again, he sips it again, like he's, like the next moment should be him being like, ah, I got you, I came in it. I came in it, I just got <laughs> in the soda. That's the level, if the moment after was I spat in that, you'd be like, oh, I get it. I understand yeah, what right, this character's right. behaving with. But, but since it wasn't. he doesn't, it's fucking insane. <laughs> right. And it never, it never gets mentioned again. I don't mm -hmm. know why it got written in the script. I don't know if it's supposed to be humorous. None of the characters react like it's humorous. No. They're totally stone-faced. He's like, I made you four sodas mixed in a cup. And he's like, I don't want it. He's like, you drink it. You drink it. Again, one of the major <laughs> things of this movie is don't drink soda. Right, right. They reject this movie's major message more than Christ, more than salvation, <laughs> is don't drink soda. Stay don't drink hydrated. your calories. All you need is water. <laughs> so this movie does have, to be fair, this movie has a message I agree with. I, I don't. Let me have some soda. So then again, so his brother is talking about, in the most vague terms possible about his promotion, he's like, yeah, bro. Huge promotion. Oh, really? What kind of promotion? A promotion. <laughs> I have, was at one job, and, and now, now I it's am at a different one. <laughs> different job than before. Come on, man. Just read the script. Don't ask questions. <laughs> it says here that you're supposed to stare at me as though your eyes have been like... Oh, no. have the silver no, tincture like yeah, in them or something. That. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. exactly. Continue to stare at me as though the camera were about to pull down and you were jerking off under the table. <laughs> Thum, 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 thum. Oh, you got a promotion, did you? Thum, 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 thum. <laughs> and again, they me. mentioned the recession because yes. while we haven't talked about God yet, we have mentioned the recession <laughs> twice. <laughs> so now we go to second scene with Satan. And I yes. should point out that in this movie, this movie's so fucking crazy, hell never looks the same twice. No. Sometimes it looks like <laughs> outer space. Uh -huh. Sometimes it looks like... Mortal Kombat. Right, Mortal Area Kombat. 51 rail shooter going on. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right, exactly. But this time is very important uh, because it opens with Satan going, talk to me. So Satan turns into fucking... Ari from Entourage, right? <laughs> On his, like, talk to me, tell me the news, hit me with it. It's like the fucking kid stays in the picture, uh, with him starring Satan. And which, to which, you know, he responds, for some reason, the great temptation of a second dinner date didn't work. 
but now I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Yep. So it's it's a Godfather reference, which is fucking insane. <laughs> right. And then and then Satan threatens him, and this is a system that I'm really interested in. I want I wish the movie had explored more. He says, This better work, or you're going back thousands of years in promotion. Which means that hell somehow has a time based seniority system. <laughs> so like rapist caveman were are are the highest levels and it's then like Hitler they're union now they're making 20 bucks an hour and <laughs> right benefits. exactly He's like I'm a 15 year man all right <laughs> that guy over there he raped someone right he was one of the first guys to murder literally one of the first guys <laughs> to murder all right so he gets a 25 minute lunch break and a 30 minute coffee break that's very important <laughs> satan's just like all right i'm trying to be more open in meetings right all right like who moved my did everyone read who moved my cheese <laughs> read that? i think that's really important because i what i'm hearing a lot when we're talking about how to distract jesus is a lot of people talk complaining about the cheese but not about where they're gonna make it go you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know what i'm saying all right fantastic great who has who has a compliment sandwich for our for our person today <laughs> So then he, the demon guy comes back and he looks exactly like Chevy Chase. To the extent that I was like, is that Chevy Chase? He looks <laughs> exact, pretty far. Picture perfect like Chevy Chase. And his second, pe- his second temptation of Jesus is, your brother sure is doing well for himself. <laughs> right. That was the like, big promotion thing. Right, exactly. Big promotion. I remember you and him used to compete. I mean, sure, you're the son of God, but you're not, you don't have a six figure income. Right. <laughs> Which, of course, doesn't work. So then he transports them to Las Vegas. <laughs> to the, For to the no roof reason. where they take the roofies and hangover. Right, exactly. And he's dressed like Mr. Peanut. <laughs> Uh, he goes, and is that, again, to just show you how little people know about the real world who made this movie, he goes, Las Vegas, the epitome of fame and fortune. Which is kind of like saying, here we are, IHOP, the epitome of cuisine. <laughs> if you want to tempt someone, maybe, maybe you don't p- take them to a city where old ladies die at the nickel slots machine. <laughs> here we are, the king of glamour. You see that? 25 year old throwing up it's his birthday <laughs> you see this Pete was a Rose, mistake he's there till he dies right exactly <laughs> now to i which... do want to say though the old guy chevy chase here in this scene he absolutely goes for it oh <laughs> I mean, yeah this was it was so much fun watching this guy like 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 throw down his temptation which by the way one of the one of the moments within his temptation he actually says i had to rewind this and make sure this was correct he actually says I'll get you on the cover of every nature magazine in the world. <laughs> yeah, every na- I think nature he meant magazine. major, but he did say nature. I'll get you on the cover that of every my, that that was actually part of his temptation. Right. I'll get you on the cover of a magazine. And then he calls him Buster. He's like, "Hey, you don't know what I'm talking about, Buster." <laughs> so then they have an energy ball fight. <laughs> Which is so fucking crazy. He shoots it. Jesus shoots an energy ball at him. Kamehameha. So, yeah, exactly. He shoots a Kamehameha at him. So then he vanishes and turns into a wolf. And he's like, what do you think of me now? At which point, a helicopter, the world's worst CGI helicopter, flies over the building. And the demon, who has turned himself into a wolf, jumps out of that helicopter, which explodes onto Jesus. <laughs> And tries to strangle him. <laughs> While he's strangling him, someone, not Jesus, says, get behind me, Satan, and he vanishes. That is the fight scene of this movie, and if you can look, if you watch anything from this movie, watch that 10 second clip, cause it is so bonkers bananas fucking crazy. I had no idea Jesus had Hadoukens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's fucking crazy. So yeah, uh, so Satan kills Krillin on a rooftop, and then they, <laughs> They throw light balls back and forth. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So then they go to the wedding. But now, can, can we talk about, because we haven't really talked about the establishing shots in this movie yet. Yeah. Many of the establishing shots are still photographs of somewhat related things. 
This yeah. one was a still photograph where they had CGI'd very poorly and some little birds flying by, so it didn't look like a still photograph. And then you cut to the inside, and you've got the bride and groom getting married. And the groom looks like a like a 16-year-old kid that had to wear a tuxedo and be in this movie because he broke somebody's fucking window. Right, yeah, exactly. If if there was just B-roll of him being like, this is fucking stupid, I want to go <laughs> ride bikes. And she's like, whatever, Brad, just be cool. They said if we're in the movie, we can have some of the communion afterwards. And he's like, whatever, it's fucking dumb. So they're standing there, and everything looks like a fucking nightmare. Again, everything in this movie just looks like, if at any moment all of the things like came out of my TV and were like, hur, 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 I'd be like, oh, I get it. I get it. This makes way more this sense is, now. Yeah, exactly. Shouldn't have taken that Molly. <laughs> Never buy Molly from a stranger. And the guy comes up and he's like, hey, man, uh, all the wine got locked in the closet. What are we going to do? Yes. And the mom looks at him like, eh? Eh? But he doesn't get it. <laughs> eh? eh? <laughs> Take a look at those water jugs over there. And again, the water jugs are just still photographs that have been like, they're basically, they, if they had a PA just holding up a poster of water <laughs> jugs in front of a wall, they're like, Dave, we can see your arm. Fuck you. All right, great. Uh, you see those water jugs over there? Dave, your arm is right in the shot. Fuck you. All right. Do you see him? No. <laughs> no. So then he goes over and he, we have this horrible CGI oh, water God. getting poured into a glass and then turning red, mm -hmm. which as a magician I found very insulting. Right, uh, like they couldn't even buy the right. fucking... <laughs> they, you couldn't do the version where you pour water in and there's there's fucking food, food coloring at the yeah, bottom, right, guys? Right. Come on, first draft. <laughs> food coloring at the bottom, that's how it's done. It's fun. They did it at my fucking preschool when I yes. was four years old. They figured it out in Binghamton, New York. You could have put the work in. <laughs> But everyone reacts like their assholes get blown out of the back of their neck. So much of this movie is reaction shots of because they can't shoot the miracles. So lots of this movie is just reaction shots of people mm -hmm. being like, oh, that's so amazing and looks really good and is not terribly shot. <laughs> At which point, one of the waitresses, I assume, one of the waitresses goes, it's a miracle. You get it? A miracle. <laughs> so then we go back to hell. Now, this is my favorite hell because there is very clearly... A kangaroo in this version of hell. There is. You can watch it again. He wanders over. They're like fiery rocks, but there's very clearly a kangaroo there. Why is there a kangaroo in hell? Who knows? What did that kangaroo do to go to hell? What are the implications of having a kangaroo in hell? Staggering. There are staggering implications between a damned kangaroo. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Kangaroo. I, that's the movie I want to see. Kangaroo rapist. <laughs> Kangaroo murderer. The He's just the Dexter of kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> the kangaroo's voiceover comes in. I'm a cool monster. I kill the killer kangaroos. I'm like, oh, what I would give for a backstory on the hellbound kangaroo. <laughs> At which point, Satan asks, this is three months later, more than three months later, Satan goes, what happened in Vegas? Yeah. I wanted them so badly to say, stays in Vegas. <laughs> right. At which point we cut to Jesus eats Mexican food. So they just small talk for 20 minutes. And then that, what you were talking about earlier about the Christian movie's inability to know the difference between what's tough and what's gay. The motorcycle bangers! <laughs> Fat Chicha Chong bikers. Yes. Fat Chicha, and, and one of whom is left. dressed exactly like the biker from the village people. Even <laughs> down to like, he's got the funny mustache, and he's it's got obviously like something that he's just, it wasn't even like a fake mustache, he just like cut some shit out of an old t-shirt and kind of shaped it like a mustache so he'd have the big droopy mustache. Yes. Uh -huh. Right, exactly. And they didn't have him talk, because I'm sure that guy, if they had, they'd been like, what do you think, cruncher? He would have been like, oh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all these big sweaty men everywhere and Rocco's niece is feeling all better and y'all are having Mexican food oh I wish I could I wish I could I'm trying to do Atkins again I just feel fat you know I know I'm not I know I'm not I'm not fishing for compliments but I just feel fat I'm wearing sunglasses indoors and I feel like they make me look silly tell me I don't look silly I swear that the dude he looked like the kind of guy who would just tell you his safe word when you met him right exactly there was safe words chainsaw alright let's get this shit started you're at the library doesn't matter to me 
When you choose to look like this on purpose, this is the lifestyle you lead. What do you think I am, a librarian? Come on. Let's make this shit happen. So then we cut to Jesus jamming out to some tunes in his Honda Accord. Yep. You know. Jesus drives son, a Honda. Right. Son of God driving around in a Honda. And he has a fucking uh, fucking flashover Super Sense moment to save a child. It's like, meh, 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 meh. He sees a child getting hit by a car. And I, I just want to point out that in the time it takes Jesus to drive over and save this little white girl that's about to get killed on her bike, like 90 African children starved to death. Right, exactly. But, you know, his super sense doesn't go off for any non-white people. Which, by the way, (laughs) if you were hoping to see some non-white people in this movie, oh, don't worry, there is one. One, One, just one. And he is celebrating sports. But we'll get to him later. Yeah. By the way, when when he has the premonition that a little girl is about to get hit while she's riding a bike, his response is to speed around a residential neighborhood at like 90 miles an hour in his car. And then... Fly out in front of a guy in an SUV. It's, that was like the best way you could think of to fix this. Right. That's the way God wants things to be fixed. I wanted so badly for the shot to pan out and there's just like a dog and a little boy attached to the leash crunched into one of his wheels. And he's like, <laughs> right. Yeah, Swat. Super Senses That's didn't right. tell me about him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Jew. Butterfly effect. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry. So then the old there's guy. There's a Muslim kid still stuck in my back grate from last week. <laughs> When a Christian little boy was going to sneeze and no one was going to say, bless you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, and then we get to what I thought was the opening of the porno that snuck its way into the middle of this. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I started jerking off and everything. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Oh, he's here with the wrench to fix the (laughs) faucet. This is perfect. And there's two chicks. Women that that we haven't been introduced to correctly yet. No, we sort of introduced to the eyelash girl when when she was kidnapped by, uh, by the Undertaker and shit, but she hasn't been a character up to this point. And now all of a sudden... There's a Slovakian chick in here, too? <laughs> right. A Slovakian chick who speaks, who will be the main character at the end of this movie for whatever the fucking reason. So then he crawls under the sink, and two seconds later, it's fixed. It's one, not a cutaway, because it's yeah. they're all talking while it's yeah, happening. Uh-huh. He just crawls under the sink, I assume removes the demon from it. <laughs> which is like, With a Hadouken. Uh, right. Switches the, switches the switch from broken to cor- <laughs> not broken. <laughs> Gets out. And then we cut to Jesus meeting number two, where we check in with uh, Rocco, the biker's niece. Mm-hmm. And she says, she says one of my favorite lines in the movie. And you got to hear the delivery of this because she says it like she's bragging. No more headaches. No, it's wonderful. I can sleep at night now. Motherfuckers. Right? Like she's bragging. Like she's bragging. She's like, oh, look at me. I can sleep at night whenever I want to. Every time I lie down at night, my eyes close and I just black out right like a light. I can do it on train. And everyone's like, oh, fuck, she can sleep at night. I can only sleep when the clock chimes three. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and by the way, again, Rocco is a Hispanic dude that weighs 400 pounds. His niece or daughter or sister or whoever is a little skinny white girl. No attempt to explain this. Right. So then Rocco comes in and he's like, hey, we're here to pick up. Everyone looks like, like, oh, these are two gnarly bikers. And his gay friend's like, I'm parked outside. So <laughs> we've just really got to go. We, we have brunch with friends. So Rocco, quickly, quickly, Rocco. I'm really happy to meet your friends, but not right now. <laughs> so then Rocco's like, hey. And he's like, Rocco, come here. You've never really been loved. You've tried to fill that hole with women. <laughs> And drugs. <laughs> and even today, that hole's not filled. It's not your fault, Rocco. <laughs> but I have a gift for you. Prostate cancer. That is the line. <laughs> I have a gift for you. Prostate cancer. Now he then says, prostate cancer, go! Like it's a fucking Pokemon. <laughs> That's the world's the worst Pokemon. That's the spell. I wish I had known about it. My dad used the rapid arc laser treatment. I think the spell would have been a lot easier. Now, right. <laughs> but my question on this is, does he have to yell the name of every affliction before he heals it? Because that could be embarrassing, right? I mean, like, <laughs> anal warts, go! Syphilis, herpes. go! Herpes, Internal herpes, hamster go. scratches, go! Yeah. Herpes, go! Wow, I'm carrying a lot of herpes tonight. Come on, people, keep it in your pants. Herpes, go! Herpes, go! All right, if there's herpes in the room, just all the herpes, go. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, he's, he basically commands it. He's like, go, go, prostate cancer. Use metastasize. Prostate cancer. 
I just, in my head, I had a vision of prostate cancer against Pikachu. <laughs> Like, your prostate cancer, just being in a doctor's office, and we have some bad news, your your prostate cancer is evolving. It's now prostate cancer, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it can use tackle, as well as sand throw. It's I now do, also a lightning-type Pokemon, so when you fart, bolt, little sparks so. will fly out of your ass. <laughs> then we wind up back in hell, and Satan has himself a new demon. Has a new demon who is equally gay. Again, I would not be surprised if they went to, like, a... A formerly gay Christian ministry, because everyone in this movie is like a gay bear, and the gay yes. bear is like, "Hey, Satan, how's it going? It's me." <laughs> and Satan seems a little freaked out and put off by him. He's like, "Oh, what happened to the other guy?" And he's like, "Oh no, I got this, Satan. I'm gonna fuck him up." And he's like, "Oh wow, all right, um, hey." Eh. A little different. And this version of Hell, by the way, in case you're wondering, is a giant dark stoned room with black guys just standing yes! around with their arm crossed. It's a Black Panther meeting in a gymnasium, apparently, is yes. this version of Hell. And this guy, uh, you know, he has no better temptation ideas than Chevy Chase did. He's going to go after JC's banker, I guess, through the right, Catholics. He's going after, I know that going after his business didn't work the first time, so we're going to go after his business. Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to go after his business. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't get any of the notes when Tom left. I hear he got demoted, but I, I, I am, I'm literally just trying to do his job and my job during this transitional period right now. Um, <laughs> didn't have a lot of time for brainstorming. Right, exactly. I was on the other side of a glory hole 20 minutes before this. <laughs> oh, and then we get to the we get to the time for the big game. Yes. Time for them to go to the big game. So they're, they, they're, they're cutting to the car, and there's two things I want to point out about this car. The first is, he drives with swivel hands, like when you're miming driving and <laughs> yes. you move your hands back and forth. If, if we had a, if we had an, a crane shot of this car, it would be <laughs> weaving wildly back and forth across the medium. And it, it literally seems, this, this script is so bad, it seems as though he swerves into oncoming traffic because of an awkward pause in conversation. Because she's like, I'm going to be bored. I'm not going to like the baseball game. He's like, no, come on. You're going to love it. Pause. And then he just like turns the wind. He's, like, he's just like, fine, you're not going to love it. Let's go to fucking Valhalla. <laughs> and then there's a big wreck and everything. But before we go any further, I need something that rhymes with schlong tip to get me through. So uh, let me give the hard sell to the last third of this show. <clears throat> Will the guy whose name is suspiciously similar to Lazarus die? Will Jesus give up on his ministry and fuck the Slovakian chick already? Will they learn how to light that goddamn green screen? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for Act 3 of The Miracle Man. Hi, uh, Alan. Can I talk to you for a second? Uh, yeah, sure, Satan. So, um, what's on your mind? Uh, first of all, thanks so much for coming in. I want to say that you're doing a fantastic job with the genocides in Ghana. Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, it's a team effort, really, though. I mean, Steve and Allison have been a huge part of that success, if I'm being great. honest. Great, I appreciate that. Team player, really great. Uh, so, actually, what I wanted to talk to you about is what you might call a pinch point in your work right now. Uh, oh, yeah? what's What's that? Yeah, so the, the temptation of Jesse Crawford, son of God, obviously an incredibly important goal for us. Yeah, definitely, yes. V very exciting project. Yeah, so here's the thing. I've been watching all of this on Hell TV, and it seems that your ideas have been to sort of offer him a second dinner date and put his face on magazine mm -hmm. covers. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. It's just, don't we have something... Better to tempt him with? I hate to use that um, term, but like, do we have some better? Uh, I, I don't follow. So, so like that waitress. Melissa. Right, Melissa. A good with names. She, she seems fine, but what if instead we thought of something a little bit more, I mean, I am the devil, so like, I want you to feel like you can go crazy here. Oh, okay, okay, I think, I think I see your point here. So, you're looking for, for something a little racier, a little more on the direct side, maybe. Exactly, exactly. Like, like, we could offer to take him to Hooters. It's a great restaurant. Have you seen how the, the waitress is dressed there? He would he would love that. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I, I've, I've seen it. I, I was thinking more like 
writhing succubi, a thousand nights of painful writhing pleasure, his darkest fantasies fulfilled at a moment's notice. Yeah, or, or like a subscription to Jugs or something like that. Cause okay. Yeah, I mean, okay, you know what? Why don't we switch gears? Power. He's the son of God. He wants to change the world. Magazine covers doesn't really fit that, does it? I, I mean, I guess not. Okay. I mean, so go crazy. What kind of power is he looking for? Uh, maybe, maybe laser vision? No, no, not even a little. I mean, sorry, no bad ideas, but remember, he's looking to rule the world. Rule the world powers, then. Is right, what, that's what, not what, a thing. You just repeated what I said. Can I, you get specific to down that. into... Okay, oh, no, I know, I know. All right, hit me. What if... Uh... Yeah, I, I think it's too much. I think it's too much. No, 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 no. I, I, you're on to something. Give it to me. Go on. Hit me with it. All right. All right. Um, what about this? Ooh, I like this. What am I? Uh, this is a buy eight, get one free ticket for alligator bagels in Bayo, New Jersey. <laughs> with three holes already punched. I made a terrible mistake. In 2008, Eucalyptus Barnes was the best park ranger the Australian Park Service had ever seen. All right, everybody, stay calm. This won't be the most crocs I've ever had to wrestle at the same time. Until a tragic accident left him a broken man. You can't keep beating yourself up like this, Euc. Nobody could have saved that baby from that damn dingo. I should have been faster. But when a new menace arises, the Australian Park Service has nowhere else to turn. No excuses, Eucalyptus. I need you back. I'm not the park ranger. I was back then, Captain. You need to be. Why, Cap? What are you up against this time? It's unlike anything I've ever seen. What's that kangaroo doing to that lady? (laughs) Ah! Save me, Eucalyptus! Keep your hands away from your pouch, Roo. From Green Screen and a Rape Van Productions, makers of Miracle Man and other award-eligible films, comes the prequel everyone's been waiting for. Hellbound Kangaroo. That's it, Eucalyptus. You're off the case. You're too reckless. You don't get it, Captain. This isn't about the job anymore. When that kangaroo raped those nuns, he made it personal. What are you going to do, Yuke? I'm going to drag that fucking marsupial through the gates of hell. Hellbound Kangaroo. Going even further down under. Summer of 2016. So we're back to polish off the action, and we're going to open Act 3 by meeting the obligatory, offensive, stereotypical black guy that shows up at least (laughs) once in every single Christian movie we've ever watched. Because it wouldn't be a Christian movie unless there was a black character to act like a racist stereotype and then disappear, never to be seen again. Like almost everything that happens in this movie, yes. So the first thing to know about this black guy that's very important is he has the reddest eyes you've ever seen. (laughs) If you watch it, his eyes are blood red, like a Mm. demon. Like I expected him to, I was like, wow, that's the one good special effect. He kind of looks like a (laughs) demon. But no, we just see him cheering for sports in a way like a human being had never watched sports before. Just like, (laughs) yeah, 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 (laughs) sports time. That's what I'm talking about. So then Jesus' razor goes off. 2013. This movie is from 2013 and Christ has a razor. Um, so the, he goes, he hands him, the, he hands his friend the phone and goes, knowing what's, what, he knows what's about to happen. He knows the move. phone call is going to be about his buddy getting into a car wreck and dying. Right, because you remember that part of the Bible where Jesus finds out about Lazarus dying and just ignores it for two days? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> he's got other shit, because he's hanging out somewhere else, and he just doesn't want to take an earlier flight back. The fuck remember with my Canaanite right? friend, make him answer the phone and give me right. shitty news. Yeah. And, he, I, and indeed, that black guy's lines is, he's like, oh really? Is that what happened? Okay, well, I'm sure he'll call you back! This is, And then he gets off the phone. This is literally how he gets off the phone. He goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And hangs up the phone. That is the, (laughs) that is how that character gets off the phone. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Girl, <laughs> what did the other person on the line say? <laughs> Unless it was you did it. You crashed the car into my brother. You're a murderer. <laughs> then it makes it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hang up. And so, yeah, and he says, Jesus, you need to fly back there right now. And Jesus is like, nah, fuck it. I'll wait till Monday. Gonna, I'll go back on Monday. But and your the guy pray- stops and he goes, Monday? That's, um, okay to six. One, and two, two. Two, uh, one, two days from nine now. Two days. Two days from now. Two days from now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are we still shooting? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to what is very clearly a Malibu rehab center, <laughs> which is supposed to be our hospital. So clearly a, hospital, a re- exactly. Christian rehab center. <laughs> It's probably where they were, where they're fixing the gay and all of the, uh, all the bears that they have. All in this these movie. bear daddies? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she goes, your sister has a, a broken arm and we had him stable, but then 15 minutes ago, his heart started to fribulate. Yeah. What? <laughs> fribulate. Because they were obviously like, what is that thing they do when they make their heart better? A defibrillator? <laughs> well, that must mean that fribulation is a bad thing. <laughs> right? Defibrillation. Fribulation. He fribulated himself to sense. death. <laughs> now keep in mind, by the way, again, this is a, like a, like a Russian, like an Eastern fucking uh, European chick, um, with a very thick accent that is supposed to be the sister of this Hispanic guy and this Native American girl, and they've made no effort to explain how that works as sisters. Clearly, they just had to use whoever the fuck they could drug into being into this movie at the time. Right. I'm sure they just went to a mental hospital and were like, hey, who here's thing is Jesus? And those three people raised their hand. And they're like, great. You're coming with us. We've got a day trip for you. Can any of these guys be touched around uh, camera equipment? Oh, no. Please do not trust them around camera equipment. Don't worry. We're shooting all of this on a motor scooter. (laughs) We're shooting all of this through a colostomy bag. Um, So then she goes, she goes, you need to be with him right now. At which point she goes, no, and has the worst fake crying ever. Now, listen, I watch a lot of fake rape porn. And this is by far the worst <laughs> fake crying I have ever heard from an Eastern oh, European woman. All right? <laughs> and when I say that, it it means a lot. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you. If Carl Sagan says he hasn't seen something in space, you listen. And when I say that that woman's fake crying, that Eastern European woman's fake crying is unconvincing, I'm the man to go to. All right? So then she has her lake montage. And this is... This is the real, like, Facebook status, broken up Facebook yes. status moment. She goes, and I've written, I wrote it down exactly. She writes, God, where are you? Are you real? I thought if I followed you, good things would happen. Why all the heartache, the hurt, the pain? I can't take it anymore. I couldn't take it anymore either. Holy <laughs> Leave- shit. <laughs> Leave me alone. She says, Leave me alone, like God won't stop texting her. And and by the way, this is all being delivered as a voiceover as she walks around in a like in a depression commercial uh, oh, sequence in right. front of a duck pond. Yeah. It was like it was like a rejected Calvin Klein ad for like atheist cologne or something. I, I don't know. We're going back and forth between black and white and color and shitty yeah, filters uh-huh. and this slow crescendo of terrible orchestral string music. Vague, oh, if you slowly lost delivered. Faith in God, unfinished try ideas. Kaplanomax. <laughs> right. by yes. Calvin Klein. Macy's. Side effects may include the inability <laughs> to speak English and being related to people you couldn't possibly be related to. <laughs> <laughs> and the, so then he walks, he finally comes in because he was, you know, he's done, it was all you can eat night at the Sizzler finished up so he decides to wander back to Phoenix. Yeah. So he comes into the house that isn't his and she goes, he's dead. Where were you? A valid question, which never get mm-hmm. answered. Yeah. Uh, the guy who's like walking around miracling people back to life and shit here and there. Yeah. Like, it would have been nice for you to show up. Right. So he goes in to talk to the sister and she's sitting in her room. And the, you, you, there is no better explanation of the budget of this movie. Than oh, yes. Her, her cast is a tendonitis wrist strap <laughs> wrapped in gauze. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those wrist supporters wrapped in gauze. It could not look less like a cast. If they had just written the word cast on her arm, it would have been better than what they did. 
And then she, and they have this moment where he's like, she's, he's like, what happened? And she's like, we got hit by a car. And she goes, it wasn't our fault. It wasn't our fault. Which is, that doesn't matter. What if it had been her fault? It was yeah, right. Cra- just like, I, I felt like he was going to be like, you sure it wasn't a little your fault? Did you tell him you didn't want to go to the football game? And he swerved his car into oncoming traffic. Okay. It was a little my fault. I'm sorry. Kind of this is on car, me. Yeah. <laughs> And then they they also did this weird thing where they like they added tears to her face in post. Mm-hmm. Like they drew on tears that didn't move as her face moved. Yeah, um, that was that was so fucking weird to me. I, I I like I honestly didn't listen to anything in this scene. I just looked at those fucking tears in disbelief. <laughs> Neither did Jesus. If you watch that actor's face, he's like looking off camera at someone, being like, <laughs> "What the fuck is this shit? We're cutting this scene, right?" right? I hope so. This is horrible. I don't what? think anything oh, so- got caught from this movie. I don't think there was <laughs> oh. anything that got wound, that wound up on camera. Even if the camera just kept running for a little while after the conversation shot, that silence stayed in. If Hell Kangaroo stayed in the movie, right. everything <laughs> stayed in the movie. <laughs> so they go, he, and then he turns to her, he goes, you'll understand by the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Pause. Let's go see him. It was such a long pause that I was like, oh my god, they forgot to cut, and now I'm going to watch the actors have lunch. Like, it's just like, good, good shot, and it's just like the camera stays on like a fucking found footage horror movie, a demon's going to crawl into the wall. Like, Did you see that? Fine. So they so, go to the hospital, not hospital, which could not be less of a hospital. Now, I want to point this out, too, because this is another one of these ridiculous establishing shot still photos. The establishing shot for this, they're going to, like, the morgue or whatever, and the establishing shot is just a photograph of the Phoenix skyline from, like, six miles away. Yeah. It's not even, like, a, a particular building. It's a still shot of Phoenix when you Google Phoenix. Right, exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Phoenix, there was a dead body in a hospital. Trust us. Come on now. We're almost done. <laughs> Wrapping it up. Man movies are long. Yeah. Oh, he, he shows up at the morgue, and he goes... So, yeah, I'm thinking about uh, resurrecting this guy. And the guy at the front desk is clearly bored by how often this happens. To him. He's, <laughs> like, he's like, oh, you're going to resurrect him? Cool, just oh, you know, God, sign in over there. You know what? You know, it doesn't matter. Just go through that restricted access door. Make the left for the morgue. Have a blast. Whatever. You know, just write down whoever you resurrect so I can keep inventory straight. <laughs> so, right if you you're going to resurrect the recently departed, I'm going to need you to fill out these forms, sir. <laughs> Come up to the desk when I call you. When I call you, not when you're done, when I call you. And then he looks up to heaven and he's like, God. And literally, it is shot for shot, word for word, a DBZ going Super Saiyan power up. He's like, God, I could do nothing without you. And the music's like, bum, bum. And he's like, if he had turned, if his hair had turned yellow, I would have been like, fine, sure. Why the fuck not? This movie's done everything else. It wouldn't have been weirder. We wouldn't have been like, oh, well, no. that doesn't make any sense. And, you know, and Vegeta just come popping out of the wall. Kakarot, are you raising the dead again? <laughs> fucking Frieza comes in. I'm a boy. What? <laughs> so, fucking, he, he Kamehameha's Lazarus across the room, uh-huh. at which point he fights his way out of the blanket, which again, if you need an example of the, the bad film, is the actor itself was obviously like under a hot blanket and was like, no, uh, 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 blanket was hot. They couldn't, yeah. handle, they couldn't get him a body bag either. It was just a blanket. Right. And we get the same reaction shot that we got to the water into wine miracle from the orderly who's like, go, go, That is my car, Jesus. <laughs> and then it pans out Bear Daddy Satan Minion has been watching this on a TV? I, uh, yes. <laughs> on a yes. TV. Yeah. It's very clearly on a television. Yes. <laughs> and he gets so mad, I was like, oh, he's mad. I bet he's going to explode. And indeed he does. <laughs> he explodes, that explodes is, into yep. birds or something. He bur- explodes into birds like fucking, ba- like the end of Batman Arkham Knight. <laughs> he fucking poofs into a thousand different flying creatures and then the movie cuts off instantly the movie cuts that's off it. like that's it it was just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and now we get cheap credits for six minutes yeah right exactly. they, they must have uh, called that early definitely must have called that does anyone feel like last act is necessary because we've all been here for several hours now making this masterpiece no, i think we could just call it a wrap <laughs> yeah, at a certain point we're just gilding the lily this is <laughs> 
<laughs> let's, let's just skip the end. Didn't we miss a part? There's a thing that happens to Jesus towards the end. <laughs> he brings the guy back to life. Is it, well, he man. has more financial troubles. Is it more financial troubles? <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk about it. Let's have him going over his 401k. <laughs> No, I don't remember. And we'll deal with it later. I can only imagine what the crucifixion, how the crucifixion would have oh, been portrayed was... in this series. Yeah, kind of was shooting hoping holes we'd get through there. his hands and feet <laughs> while he stands against a pinball <laughs> machine like the accused. <laughs> All right, so in a desperate and likely futile effort to find something redeeming in the 90 minutes of my life that this movie sucked away, I ask you both, what did we learn from The Miracle Man? Drink plenty of water. <laughs> plenty of water. You need eight glasses no of water a day. <laughs> Christ of Nazareth has commanded it. And his mom. And his and mom. His mom. Uh, I learned that even when you got a nice strong script, you know, a great supporting cast, industry leading special effects, you're still going to need a real pro like like a Kirk Cameron to carry the plot or else <laughs> Apparently. you're going to get something like this that isn't very good. <laughs> yeah, you can't get sweaty Aragorn. Um, all right, so in hopes of avoiding one of those like thumbs up or this many stars cliches, I ask you this. What's the worst thing that you would let a shark do to your balls rather than watch this movie again? <laughs> I think. I'd rather get a clumsy blowjob from a shark with braces while watching... Sharknado 3 on repeat. I'd rather teabag a shark and watch Ian Ziering act than watch Miracle Men ever again. I'd rather have an awkward breakup with a shark uh, that's actually about its weight, but I'm trying not to make it about its weight. Uh, at an Italian, at, a, at, a, at an olive garden where the waitress refuses to come over and take the check because she can see the shark is crying and doesn't want to deal with that. I would do that forever rather than ever watch this movie again. Like, oh, oh. No, it's not. That's not what it's about. I'm just not in a relationship. Like, oh. And yeah, I mean, if you want to bite a chunk out of the table. All right, now that's going to do it for our review of Miracle Man, but that is not going to do it for the show quite yet because each week we're going to be closing with a tease for what's on deck with a quick preview review. So, Eli, tell us, what are we going to suffer through next week? Oh, next week we have... Because you know what? Miracle Man is a little bit of a downer. The quality was low, and I figured we needed oh, something yes. to bring us up. A story of love, <laughs> a story of romance, a story of no greater love. Now, we, we haven't actually watched this movie yet, but we did watch... The preview, and we came prepared to do a breakdown Fantastic of that. Fantastic movie based on yeah. the preview. Now, I have to say, after The Miracle Man, as soon as I saw, like, Lion Gate's film, Lionsgate film presents, I was like, oh, thank God. <sighs> oh, yeah, there'll be people, people who run cameras for a living will have operated these <laughs> yes, cameras. Thank yes. God. Exactly. Oh, thank God. I'm worried we're going to end up giving this movie a glowing review. <laughs> we're right. End up being like, actually, you know what? <laughs> the title of the podcast changes next week to like God Christian movies because we're just yes. like, you know, it makes some really good points. <laughs> no one said, did you get bit by a squirrel? The scenes all cut when everyone was done talking. Come on, guys. I've been reading this William Lane Craig book and in between... <laughs> I'm glad I'm getting it now. You know, hard questions, <laughs> tough answers. Well, hard questions. I wouldn't say good answers. <laughs> Definitely hard questions, though. Oh, yes. You've got to give them credit. <laughs> yeah, so the trailer alone for this movie. So basically, this movie starts out... I have a feeling that this movie is going to suffer from something that me... I have a very close friend... And me and my friends say, uh, this movie is going to suffer from liar, liar syndrome. Because if you've seen the movie Liar, F Liar, there's one huge flaw with the movie. And that is the other boyfriend character in that movie, who, as far as we know, is a totally nice guy, right? In mm -hmm. Liar, Liar, there's that other, he's going to fly them out. He's been taking care of the kids. He's nothing but nice to the kid. There's yeah. never a and moment. he saved the princess bride as he, well. But he can't so. do the claw right. Well, right. He can't, exactly. He can't do the claw right. But... Yeah, that guy gets fucked in that movie. Yes. That guy gets fucked. <laughs> that lying, cheating, horrible guy terrorizes a plane full of human beings <laughs> and risks everyone's life on it. And she's like, we'll go with you. And he's like, that's fine. I guess I'll just, oh, I loved you. I asked you to marry me. Go. <laughs> so I have a feeling this movie, because the very first thing we see is a husband whose wife drank alcohol, was pregnant, then drank alcohol, then immediately left him. Yes. 
So with, it him, left him with the kid. Right, left him with the kid. And then we see him, him dating a new woman who seems perfectly nice, mm-hmm. only to learn that when he sends his kid to Christian summer camp, <laughs> who's there at that Christian summer camp but the wife that he hasn't seen in over 10 years. Now, I, I want to point this out, too, because like this, this, this preview seemed to be trying to hide the fact that it was a Christian movie at first. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, we get forty five seconds in, and it's just oh, there, a woman went missing. Oh, how long was has, how long have you since you've seen her? Oh, well, this woman's helping me put my life together. Blah blah blah. And you're like, okay, this just looks like a normal, really boring, right, it's just a family movie. drama. And then at like forty five seconds in, there's a little hint of it because the guy's like, um, you know, he's like, oh, you know, I got to go out of town for the week, and the guy's like, oh, we have a a Christian summer camp thing. Let us borrow your kid. And he's like, oh, <laughs> certainly, sure, here, yeah, take it, whatever. But then at, at first, it, it sort of feels like okay, then the church is just a vehicle to get him there. And I'm I'm starting to wonder, is this really even a Christian movie? Um, you didn't have to wonder for very long they on it, though. Trying to right. hide it really quick because now. because then. He's loving, he loves the wife, and the big reason he comes forward, and there's just a clip of him going, you're saying I can't have my wife back because I'm not a Christian? Right. And I was like, oh, this movie's (laughs) fucking gold. Hard right into (laughs) batshit opolis right there. Yeah, it looked like we were going to get a love triangle movie, but now we've got to make room in the menage with trois for Jesus as well, so it's going to be a love quadrangle. Exactly. (laughs) And I think, I mean, I've just watched the preview, but I think this is going to be a movie about a guy who leaves a woman who has been faithful and kind to his young son for his wife who abandoned them. <laughs> and That's... in order to deserve her, yes, he's going to convert to Christianity. Yes, That's this... what this movie's selling. And I and, hope that's what this movie delivers. And and I call that the uh, the fireproof syndrome. You know, like you were talking about when we did our fireproof review about how they're treating a marriage like it's a drowning fucking baby, and you got to save the marriage, even if it's a marriage that like she abandoned you ten years ago, and you just couldn't find her to get the divorce papers to her. You still have to like treat that as though you know, like give it CPR and shit like that. Yeah, I'm just counting down the days until we find an abuse movie where it's just like I know he beats you, but. You've got to save the marriage, and just the ending shot is like the same shot from the end of Rocky Three, where they punch each other at the same time, except there's a big crucifix in front of it. Just like, and, and they never got divorced. He murdered her, but they never got divorced. <laughs> I'm country strong. I thought the only honest moment in that entire preview came at the very end when it says, "Look for it on DVD." <laughs> no, no, keep looking. <laughs> Try another store or something, or like a yard sale. You know, fuck it. You can you can borrow my copy. I go to you. go to a car wash. Usually in that bin. No, 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 not the one with the wax. The one next. To <laughs> now, now move over all those copies of Caddyshack because you know they just had a bunch and they layered them over the top. Right? You see that? That movie is a DVD. Look for one of those. <laughs> That's what you're going for. <laughs> Only with this movie on it. So with all that to look forward to, we're going to draw episode one to a close. Once again, huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make this show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. That's patreon.com slash godawful. You'll earn early access to every episode, and you'll earn longer episodes and some bonus shit here and there. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to check out our sibling show, the Scathing Atheist and the Skeptocrat available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, you can hear more by following the link on the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, I'm going to leave you with a guy from Brooklyn telling you to fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself.